I've been looking at the connections of stereotype threat and the long-term effects of stress on the brain, and trying to put together a comprehensive picture of what it's like to live in systems of oppression and how that affects our bodies and our minds. And I've been thinking about it so much that it's infiltrating my dreams, and now I'm having dreams about it and interacting with these concepts. And they're not all doom and gloom, sometimes they're very playful. And I had this dream a few weeks ago, and I wanted to share with you, so here we go. Um, last night I had a dream and I was at a party. And in that dream there were snacks, which is a really big feature for me at a party. Um, so I zoomed over there. And then there were also all these fun people to talk to, so I got to know some of them. And there was art on the walls, it was like a fancy art party. And in the center of the room was a cube. And in that cube was a person sitting on the bench. Now, I couldn't make out what the cube was made of. It seemed like it was translucent glass, or also it felt immaterial, maybe like a hologram, or maybe an idea. And the more I thought about it, and I looked at this cube, it seemed to shift. Sometimes it was matter, sometimes it was concept, sometimes it was both. As I changed my thinking about it, it, it too changed. So I walked up to the cube, and there was a little sign on a placard in front, and it said, Observe the person in the cube, ask questions. So I did. I let my mind fill with questions. You know, the basic stuff, like how do they go to the bathroom, and is it lonely in the cube? And is, is it the same temperature in the cube as it is outside the cube? And then a question moved to the front of my mind, and I asked it out loud, did the person make the cube, or did someone make it and put them in it? And no sooner had I asked that question, the cube began to sputter and shake. And there's this puff of yellow smoke. And then I looked back and saw a second cube nestled inside the first. This baffled me in the dream, so I took a few steps back, let my ideas settle down, put my hands on my belly, touched my smarts, and I tried to piece together what had happened. I had a hunch that I had somehow made the first cue, and the person in response had made the second nested, nested cue. But I don't remember doing that. I remember going to coat check, I remember zooming over to the snack table, having that awkward conversation, back to the snack table, looking at the art, and then there was the person in the cube. I don't remember ever creating it. Unless there was something to do with the matter, the concept, the interplay of the two. And I thought how, when I'd done that before with my mind, I looked at the cube and it changed its materiality based on how I perceived it, so I tried that again, and there I saw the first cube was completely permeable. And yet, the second nested cube remained completely intact. I wondered how long it would take for that inner cube to go away. I wonder if there'd still be cupcakes when they got out of the cube. So just to be sure, I made a little plate with snacks and some punch and walked over to the cube in my dream. And I remember this, I sat down on the floor and I leaned in and I whispered a promise. I said, I'm going to learn about cubes, both the inside kind and the outside kind. And when you get out, we'll share these cupcakes. And to seal the promise, we pressed our little toes together. <laughs> and then when I woke up, I saw my toes in my bed, and I remembered that promise. <laughs> <laughs>